I just had a terrible thought. What if we're being played? What if we're being played? I know I shouldn't think that. Of course we're not being played. But what if we're being played? And then you start to realize, hold on a minute, these are people that have sold their souls, right? This is one of the reasons they have a tremendous amount of money and they have ruling power over the rest of humanity, right? This is sadly, um, you know, being godly, loving God is not going to get you to rule the earth, right? It's just not going to happen because the only one who will eventually rule the earth is Jesus Christ. He is the king, the king of kings, and uh, he is the only appointed sovereign power that will be capable of and qualified to actually rule over humanity. God can, it's only God who can do that. Humans will always be corrupt and God is over the last you know, long, very long period of time. And I'm not going to say the exact length of time because I differ in my belief about the, the amount of time that's uh, happened since the very beginning um, because of lots of proof that I have. I totally am under the impression that nothing that is portrayed, told to us in the media is accurate, like nothing, all of it. And it's so sad that so much of what we know is um, borrows from mainstream. You almost need to, I'll never forget this, many, many years ago, I remember watching a video where, and I've got this video, it's one of my favorites. And in this video, he quite literally proves that every single thing we can think of, everything we dream about, see, know, uh, understand it to be so, is fake. Every single thing. And he proves it. He takes, you know, a good 60 minutes uh, or 90 minutes, probably a 90 minute uh, documentary or film, in which he proves that every single thing is fake. Everything. You know? Um, he questions your paradigms. He says, you know, so you think this is the truth, right? And then he shows you it's not. The two-party part mentality, you know, the myth of progress. Uh, who built what? You know, what existed historically? Uh, every single thing. And, and, he, and he says it, you know, whether you believe it or not, whether you like me or not for saying this, um, it's not. It's not true. Now, none of the things that you're about to see are true. Nothing. Nothing. Everything you ever thought in this reality that you thought was real is not real. It's all faked. It's all faked. Now, when I heard KJ talk about that a little earlier on that video today, um, he was talking about the elections, about Trump, about uh, Biden, and and suddenly I, I got this idea when we see Pence shake hands and uh, and it's the Masonic handshake. And then he gets the silver coin in his hand. And then Nancy Pelosi um, elbows him and has that evil laugh. <laughs> we won. We won. You know, um, we were able to oust Trump out. I suddenly go, okay, if all of this is fake, and it is, it is all fake, it's all entertainment. It's all a sham for the sake of the masses. Like Shakespeare wrote, all the world's a stage and we just have a part to play in it. Every one of us has a, place, a part to play. I'll never forget many, many years ago listening to a interview with David Icke in which he said that everything that controlled the world uh, was was a artificial intelligence, was an actual AI, was a program. And this program that controlled everything was out of control. Like humans had no control over it. Humans were only playing a part. They were, they found themselves inside this world and they had absolutely no way to control any of it, right? And this is what became so incredibly disturbing. And I have to mention it because, again, this question comes up. You have to deal with it. You have to answer it. 
So my question almost immediately was, well, how do we know that the one thing that, that, that I trust, the one thing that I genuinely try, and I must say, even, you know, there's so many things around me that I don't even trust. Like I go, mm, I'm not buying that. For some weird reason, I'm just not buying that interaction there. That thing that just had, I'm not buying that. There's just too many strange occurrences. And as I become wider awake, sharper in my awareness, I start to realize that you can't trust almost anything and everything. Never mind media. Media, I can't trust anything in media. Okay, we know that's the playground of the enemy. Uh, the prince of the power of the air, the enemy, the devil, right? He controls the media. So there's like nothing in media that I can trust. But then there's a lot of things like law. I studied law. I went through law school. I got the understanding that everything I saw in the legal system was faked as well. Everything. The more, and this is one of the reasons I could never practice because it made me realize that, you know, how can I practice a discipline that aims to be ambiguous, that aims to, yes, and I know about the literal rule and the golden rule and all those things. And as you go through it, as you understand law, you realize that it's designed to be, to obfuscate. It's designed to confuse. It's designed to uh, allow evil to go off scot-free. My dad said that many, many years ago as well, you know, that the primary aim of the law was to keep criminals out of jail, right? To keep criminals uh, out and about, right? Because the enemy has this extremely intense desire to keep chaos in the world, just as much as we would like to bring harmony and unity to the world. The enemy can only subsist, can only have his place in a future world, that comes right out of lawlessness and chaos, right? This is his way. He's diagonally opposed to everything that God is. But then today, and this is going to seem like a blasphemous thought, and I apologize, and it's not. It's just you've got to get this question out of the way. The one thing I totally believe in, with all my heart, is the Bible. I know the Bible is the absolute truth, right? I know it to be the truth. But then, then the question came up. Now, I'm not doubting the Bible. But the question came up, what if I'm wrong? What if this ecstatically perfect, perfect book with its perfect prophecies, with its perfect record of accuracy is a document written by the AI? What if... What if there is no hope? What if the whole thing has just been a program written to highlight us, to show us up, to make us show up in their system? Because it needs to know. It needs to know who's going to go along with this plan and who isn't. And by all intents and purposes, you know, we sit inside that profile, that profile of being a follower of Christ, being a follower of freedoms, being a follower of all that's good in the world, being a follower of good law, being a follower uh, that would never, ever, 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 ever under any circumstances fall in line with the plan of the enemy. You know, uh, what an amazing book that the Bible clearly differentiates between who's evil and who's good. And I find myself going, what if? I mean, it is such an amazing book. It is so perfectly written. You know, it has the sheer grandness of pure mathematics as an underlay. It, we see things written in that book. I mean, I was reading, I was reading Revelation. And, you know, when you come across a paragraph that is written at this level of elevated thinking, you start to go, hold on a minute. This is so extraordinary. I mean, this is without a doubt one of the greatest, if not the greatest book I have ever read. But in 
Revelation, we read 1 5. Um, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead, <laughs> first to be brought back to life, right? And the prince, ruler of the kings of the earth, to him, capital letters, to him, who, capital letter, ever loves us and has once loosed and freed us from our sins by his own blood, capital letter, and has a correlation, direct correlation to Psalm 89, 27. And it continues at number six, and formed us into a kingdom, a royal race, priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the power and the majesty and the dominion throughout the ages and forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Echoing Exodus 19.6 and Isaiah 61.6. I mean, it's a symphony. It's extraordinary. I mean, you continue to read this and it's filled, filled with cross-referencing interchanges. The most beautiful, I mean, I avoided Revelation. When I was always in tune with what was happening biblically, and I, and I wasn't a big reader. I wasn't, I was, I've never been religious. Never had any interest in being a religious guy. Uh, until last year when I started to see the writing on the wall. I saw instantly, you know, as in Daniel. I instantly saw. And I came to understand immediately that I needed to lay down whatever it was that was happening in my businesses and all of my own personal plans and embark on this journey to save souls, to bring the good news to as many people as I can. Because I may have lived my life, I don't think I lived it badly, but I didn't live it for God every day. You know, I did pray and I prayed pretty much, you know, daily for the last 30, 40 years or so, right? I've definitely done a lot of the right things, but there were a lot of things that I could have done better and a lot of areas of my life that I could have really improved upon. So I saw it as an instant, I got to get my life right. Because if I don't get it right, how on earth am I going to know that I, you know, that I'm not going to get stuck here on this earth? You don't want to get stuck here. You don't want to get stuck here on this plane. You don't. This place is, is evil. It's just evil under the surface, just waiting to surface. It's evil. It's Baal. It's Baphomet. It's Moloch. It's, it's disgusting. You know, it is horrific stuff, just waiting to show itself up. And the reason that it hung back so much was because of spiritual warfare done against it for a very long time. The enemy... Um, it had to try to come back in under the radar. It had tried this before quite a few times. You know, it's tried it during the um, the the time of Noah. Uh, you know, the Garden of Adam and Eve. You know, um, where fallen angels had intermarried and procreated with humans, as we're told in Genesis. Um, you know, this enemy has tried evil many times, but God keeps winning. God keeps flipping it and winning, right? This is how I see it. So we definitely get the idea that this enemy has tried it before, but this time the enemy needed to hang back for the longest possible period of time since immediately after World War II. And by the way, you know, people go, wow, since World War II, we've had peace until now. No, there's been lots and lots of internecine warfare and experimentation with DNA and with vaccines and, you know, six day war. And, you know, there's been heaps and heaps of issues that have happened over time. Um, we're just fortunate that we are living in, in countries where that level of Middle Eastern warfare hasn't sort of gone beyond the Middle East. So what I, I started to realize was that, 
we genuinely have been lucky that the enemy has needed time to figure out his next plan to develop the technology, um, the uh, luciferase and the hydrogel, which is nanoparticles and all of this stuff, to transhumanize, to take ordinary people and turn them into connected to 5G internet uh, to control them, right? Thus ushering in the exact and perfect uh, world order that they've always wanted from humanity. And they can't do it with seven point something billion people. They can only do it with 500 million people. So it's, um, it's a depopulation agenda. And it's also a, you know, they can only do this with X number of people. Everybody else is just expendable. And um, ultimately, this enemy is such a poor manager of humans. He's such a poor manager of resources that he is basically a loser, a full-on loser. But my question became, what if, you know, we're being played even one more level? Like we've been played every level. We're a sheep. We've been played. Oh man, we have been played and played and played. The deception of the aliens, which are actually demons is still coming. Uh, it's just one thing after another, right? And, um, you know, we, we're all being lied to. Nothing can stop the Great Awakening, which is happening at the moment. Um, and the world seems to be getting darker. And uh, just like in the days of Noah, people are going about it as if nothing is happening. People are worried about things in the world, like money and material things, in which, which won't matter at the end of the day at all. Things will happen when people least expect it. That's when everyone will worry at that point. So get ready. The end is coming. Uh, I would pray, study, meditate on the word of God, spread the gospel like these people are rioting in the capital and hold your family tight and tell them you'll see them in the, in the time hereafter, right? That's if um, there is no rapture, right? If there's no rapture. But of course, I, you know, we, I believe so much that God will pull us out of harm's way. And um, I completely believe that. And, um, you know, and we are, again, as I keep saying, we're just being played all the time. We're always being played. Now, what a tragic belief for any person on this earth that wakes up incrementally or all at once or over time and is now completely awake. You actually feel tired. You start to realize this enemy has, you know, and we're very fortunate because I think the, the Bible is an incredible book. It, it keeps you awake. It keeps you um, aware so that the enemy's plans basically don't deceive you. You know, I look into the Bible for everything. The more I read the Bible, the more I realize that everything is made known to me. Everything is made known to me. It's, it's very rare that I, a deception washes over me and I wasn't aware of it. The Bible definitely uh, is such an amazing book that it totally wakens you up to the plans of the enemy. Now, this is why I believe it. It is the thing that I believe solidly, 100%, you know, 1,000%. I, I just totally believe in it. But I had that thought. What if the AI wrote the Bible? And it's, it sounds blasphemous, and of course, I don't want to believe it. But I thought if I had that question, I actually should address this question. I must address the question because if I don't address the question, it's going to land up being in the back of my mind the whole time. You know, because I've been fooled many, 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 many times. And... When I get fooled, I get, I don't get upset. I don't get narky because I go, well, you know, that's how the enemy is. But it would be a bummer if we were fooled at this level as well, right? If we actually were trapped here on earth, we couldn't escape. And this book gave us this false belief that we were going to get to heaven for seven years and that we were going to um, 
continue on as a priesthood here in the millennial kingdom. And, um, and I kind of thought, well, how, how can I prove to myself that the Bible is the truth? Well, there's a few ways that I can prove it. Number one, I have a relationship with Christ, which could be psychosomatic. It could be me making it up. I don't think so, but it could be. I'll never forget Phil Baker once from Riverview Church saying, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you leave your brains at the door. You have to keep thinking. You have to think about everything. The Bible strikes me as the truth. It really does strike me as the truth. Everything that I read biblically is the truth. I know from my relationship with Ruah Ha Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, that I'm led to answers. I am led to visions. Um, this spirit of fear is not within me. Uh, I have the spirit of Jesus Christ. I have the spirit of, of the Holy Spirit within me uh, who keeps me, you know, intact and strong. Makes me know that I'm in good hands, that I'm safe, that there is a time that's coming where God will pull us out of harm's way. I just totally believe that. Right. But what if it's just my belief? Never mind my absolute relationship with this creator. But what if it's not true? What if? What if that this AI is so incredibly smart that it's so out of control and has been able to so do everything that they have a Bible for every between every reset that happens on this earth. So immediately after this reset and, you know, um, 7.3 billion people are killed as the AI wants it to happen. They'll just rewrite another Bible. They'll just rewrite another spiritual book. This AI will just write another one for the next kingdom, the next millennial kingdom. But I think people by then will be so under the thumb of the AI and so under the thumb of the beast and these demons that they will not have any awareness. There will not be a requirement for any form of biblical book because control is no longer needed. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, you know, when you take the belief, the understanding that the Bible, um, what does the Bible expect from us at this critical time in history, right? We get on our knees and we pray. Do we take to the streets and fight? No. No one, no one's taking to the streets and fighting. Are there riots? Sure, but they're, they're planned by the enemy. The enemy sponsors those riots, right? Those riots are controlled. They also purposefully show you what happens to people that riot. So you get the idea that people who riot um, and who demonstrate and who um, go up against the regimes, the tyranny, that these people get locked up. They get uh, punished, and it instructs everyone else not to do the same. People are also conditioned through what happens through social media, uh, which are really just outcroppings, manifestations of this technology. We, we really get this idea that people really are best just to shut up, do nothing, and you know, go back to their opioid, which is the Bible, which is their religious beliefs. I'm talking about religious beliefs related to everything else but Judaism and a belief in Christ, because I really do think those two, uh, Judaism and Christianity together, are one. And also, not only are they one, but they they really are God's real direct communication with humanity. Um, everything else is really idol worship. Everything. It doesn't matter what it is, you know. And the minute it makes itself openly a statement that it questions the deification, the divinity of Jesus Christ, then it's a counterfeit. It's an absolute counterfeit. And that includes all these other denominational worship things that pretend to be Christianity or some form of Christianity like Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or um, um, there's, there's so many of them. Um, 
Latter-day Saints, etc. I'm not going to go into all of them, but there's so many of them. And these are all cults. They're actual cults. They, they, they question the divinity of Jesus Christ. The minute that happens, you know they're fake. They're just not real. You know, all of them, every single thing that um, holds itself up against, and it says it biblically, you know, anything that puts itself up against Jesus Christ, uh, you know, as a principality or a stronghold uh, that stands opposed to Christ in some way or another is counterfeit. It's not the real deal. Like Catholicism. Catholicism is the ultimate cult. And then there's others, and I don't want to mention them by name because a lot of these people get very antsy and upset, and I get it. But they are. They're worshipping a cult, counterfeit ideology that's not real at all, isn't real. So if anything that you worship, doesn't matter what it is, um, exalts itself against Jesus Christ in whatever way, form, or fashion. It is demonic, satanic, luciferian, evil, counterfeit, and will send you to hell. Just remember that, okay? So how did I prove, how did I go about proving that the Bible is absolutely true? Well, let's look at the... Um, 10,835 prophecies that are in the Bible. 10,835 prophecies. I was blown away by this because I always thought the figure, the biblical figure for the number of prophecies was about 2,500 and there are many sources that say 2,500. But then just recently I came across the most extraordinary set of papers and books and there's a whole download you can actually read. Fascinating that it's actually 10,835 um, um, prophecies. And in fact, the Bible is so powerful, so powerful from a prophetic stance that it is pretty much God saying, I'm the truth, prove me wrong. I'll put myself on the line every single time to show you that I am the truth. So there's that, that is pretty powerful. But again, that could be AI, right? AI is figuring things out, AI is the one moving us in the direction of this NWO. So it could have been so super smart and so out of our boundaries of contact so we don't see where it is. And it's so doing this thing. And remember, there have been plenty of resets before. If there's one guy that you need to kind of watch is John Levi, John Levy uh, online. His uh, video channels are um, absolutely incredible. He's not just, it's not just him. There's quite a few really good, uh, extraordinary people. But what John does again and again and again and again in a non-Christian way is he shows you uh, without a shadow of a doubt that there have been many, many resets historically. Okay, many, many his resets. Resets that are disturbing. You know, you actually see entire towns or cities uh, photographs proving complete abandonment of these towns and cities, you know, again, and it's always been as a result of a pandemic of some kind, as a result of people having to don masks. This has happened many times before. These guys know this plan. They've done this plan. This plan's come up again and again and again, and it always results in the um, complete destruction of very large groups of people. And we know this historically, you know, World War II, um, you know, 20 odd million people die and then 60 million people die immediately after that with the Spanish flu. Like what? How on earth? So what, they hadn't killed enough people, is it? They had to get rid of another 60 million worldwide uh, under the guise of a pandemic. Well, pretty much. So, you know, they've been at this for a long, long time, ever since the beginning of time. I remember the Tibetan Book of the Dead, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, uh, you know, uh, Tres Majestis, uh, all of these books. You start to get a, a real sound understanding that resets have happened before again and again and again and again. They do this on purpose. It's a depopulation management agenda keeps coming up again and again, and I don't want to be negative, but my question remains, remained for quite a while, how do I prove the truth, the veracity of the Holy Bible? How, right? How? Because, and there's big nagging questions at the back of my mind, and one of the big nagging questions is World War II, Auschwitz, right? These camps, 
um, the Jews. What happened to the Jews? Why were they killed? You know, what happened there? Why wasn't there a, a rapture for them? Why wasn't there a rapture back then? What, during World War II, people may have thought World War II was the beginning of the end as well. They may have thought, you know, um, we're going to be raptured. They may have thought that it was the end. It's going to be the end. Well, the truth is, when you understand these 10,835 prophecies, you actually start to realize that these prophecies actually relate to what we're seeing right now. It's very, very specific to our time and our age. And we're starting to see lots and lots of evidence that relates to what's actually now going on, right? Um, the nation that gets to see, sorry, the generation that gets to see a nation formed in a day. Shall a nation be formed in a day, right? Um, the, the generation, the size of the generation, 70 to 80 years if you're strong or if it's, you know, if the generation is strong. So, Again, you know, those shall see the end times. They shall see the end of the ages. We, we're definitely in the last, last ages, you know. Um, 16th of May, 1948, you add 80 years, the generational definition biblically. You minus seven years of tribulation, brings us to 2021. We are in the last days. We're in the last year, okay? Immediately after this year, the tribulation begins. If not this year, it could be in August. I've, I've heard this a lot now, that August seems to be the target month uh, for lots of reasons, because the, the, the size of the lockdown, the exact timing of the lockdowns, it's all in their plans. And we know the exact number of months and all sorts of things, right? So, you know, what if there is no rescue? What if we are going to be living out this life um, and it's going to be this thing. And it was all designed to single us out, the ones who love him, the ones who um, were fools for Christ. What if we have all been played again? We've been played in every other way. Why? Why would we not be played now? You know? Um... It is a little unusual that the Bible seems to be available, the Gideon, in every single drawer at every single cheap motel throughout the world. None of this is me being horrible. It's me just questioning. You know, you've got to question. I'm not a blind follower, but I am a blind believer. I love Jesus Christ. I love my King. I love what He represents. I love God. And for that reason... I'm sold. I'm I'm there and I've seen enough proof to know it is the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the way and the life. And not only that, but I can see I can see the truth. When you know the truth, you just know the truth, right? You have this instinctual know, knowing that it's the truth that you're that you're reading. The other thing too is that if it's not a real thing, then it gives us a sense of faith. It gives us a sense of hope. It gives us a sense of our lives weren't a waste, that there is a being out there that wishes to have us come visit him, be with him, even if it's for a short while, but then we have eternity. We have an eternal soul and it's us really being asked, you know, do you stand on the side of what's good or do you stand on the side of what's evil? And I choose to stand on the side of what's good, no matter what that means. And I'm going to tell you, something inside me tells me this is the truth. No matter how, where, why, when, a really loving, kind, good creator would leave us with a life raft, with a life jacket. You know, he wouldn't leave us without that rescue, that succor, S-U-C-C-O-U-R, which stands for rescue, right? We, we wouldn't be left without rescue. A creator, a good creator.
Piedra. <clears throat> but as we know from all of historical evidence, the world's been a very dark place for a very long time, run by very evil people. And um, the only thing that's really good is the good people of this world, those who reach out beyond themselves and their own desires and selfish gain, will, wills, and actually do good things in the world. These are the people that are of value. And if it means that we die just as they once died, as good people, having done the right things, we just hope somehow this universe beyond the evil that's here on this plane, somehow we are we're rewarded either for our our willingness to do what's good or we are acknowledged by a creator somewhere, somehow. There's a lot of questions at the back of my mind. Of course, there are. Um, I'm a thinker. I do think. I could be playing music. I could be editing, creating, writing business plans, advertising, promoting, marketing. I could do a lot of other things, but sometimes I have to think aloud because when I do think aloud and I verbally log this, it allows me to settle my thoughts and figure it out a little bit. There is a conclusion to this. The conclusion is I do believe the Bible is the truth. I really do. It's just too perfect. It's too extraordinary. It may have been written by an AI. Yes, I agree. There's just so much that is so extraordinary about this book. But it doesn't mean an AI would have had the intelligence to write it. Although, you know, I've seen AI write some amazing symphonic pieces. But something says to me, something really says to me, Michael, hang in there. I'll show you soon that I'm real and I'll come and collect you. Don't worry, it'll all be fine. So, huh, yeah. I hope I haven't depressed anybody. I really hope that somehow um, you're all digging deep into your souls and saying, you know, I'm doing the right things. No matter what is going on, I will continue to do what is right. And I, and I know that my home, me and my home, we will follow God. We will do what God wishes us to do. So, yeah, it's, um, it's fascinating. It really is. I, I have other proofs that the Bible is, is legitimate because I've read just about every religious thing that's out there and I can tell you none of it has the, the extraordinariness of this Bible. Nothing. I've never come across anything that has this depth, this uh, just the the sheer in, the scope, intelligence, emotional and um, emotional intelligence. It's just the most amazing book. It really is, and I and I pity people who don't read it. I really pity people who don't actually read this book because it is. If you start reading it and you really go deeply into it, you really, you stop, you read, you go to and fro, you research it, you do Bible studies, you start matching up the Bible studies, you start to match up what you know. You start to discover things that you never imagined and not just only about the human condition but about who God really is. I am now convinced that God is completely different to what I thought God was. Like all my life I've thought God was a certain way but he's not, he's completely different. He's an amazing God. Um, he's an amazing, amazing God. He, he loves us like a daddy would love his child, whether he be a prodigal, whether he be sinful, whether he be whatever. God loves you. He loves you. He really, really loves you. And as long as you love him, he has all the time in the world for you. You can make mistakes. Things can happen. You can be whatever. He loves you, right? He just wants your, he just wants time with you. You know, we call it worship, but he calls it togetherness. He calls it together time. He calls it fellowship with him. And, um, and he loves to be glorified. He loves to be pampered with thoughts and ideas. And he just loves it when you share things with him. He takes great 
pleasure in his creations. Those who love him.